Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video on the Infinite Baffle channel. My name is Niall and today I am super thrilled to announce we're going to be taking a look at the Kef Q7 speakers, the new refined Kef Q7 speakers. This is all thanks to you guys. I mean, I said in the Concerto video, which we uploaded last weekend, that if you got that video to 50 likes, that we look at the Q7s next. And not only did we get it over 50 likes, it's over 200 likes at the moment. I mean, you guys have blown it out the water with the support on that upload. So thank you so, so much for the support on that video. Because of the support on that as well, we're closing in on 3,000 subscribers. So again, I'm going to ask you, if you do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up on it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel to get us to that 3000 mark and also leave any questions thought, thoughts feedback all of that stuff in the comment sections down below but um, yeah let's get stuck into it actually before we do get properly stuck into the video it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact that this video is going out on Sunday Saturday so yesterday would have been World International Album Day I believe I'd love to know in the comment section down below what you think is the most underrated album of all time uh, I'm going to say Red Hot Chili Peppers at Stadium Arcadium some of you guys might be thinking, I've never heard that album. Some of you guys might be thinking, there is a man with fantastic taste. But I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Yeah, uh, most underrated album of all time. So the first thing that I want to touch upon and the first thing that I always like to talk about when it comes to new speakers is the design, the aesthetics of them, what are my thoughts on that front and um, you guys if you did see the concerto video last week and by the way someone in the comment section correctly corrected my pronunciation, it's not concerto, it's concerto, I'll try and do better, please forgive my Birmingham accent but um, yeah um, I, I, there was a couple of the, I liked the concerto as a whole but the bass driver, there's a couple of bits that I wasn't a massive fan of, but still a fan of the speaker as a whole. I've got to say the Q7, and this goes for the Q11 as well, I am a massive fan of, I much prefer this design as a floor standing speaker compared to the Concerto bookshelf. I mean, I don't know what it is about it. It's, um, it's a little bit chunkier than I think you would expect from most bookshelf speakers. And it's also a little bit shorter. I want to say it's a stubbier speaker, but that sounds like a bad thing. But I'm actually a massive, massive fan of the design. It's a really nice size. And um, I also think I prefer the white as well. I mean, the Concerto we looked at last week was in the black colour. Um, I much prefer Kef speakers in the white finish, almost always universally. I think they look fantastic. And the Q7s here are no exception. A fantastic, fantastic looking speaker. The Q7 is a three-way bass reflex design. And um, again, I'm going to mention the Concerto a few times in today's video because obviously we did that recently and there's going to be a lot of things in common. And if you look at the Concerto speaker and look at the Q7, you can almost see if you sliced the Q7 in half, you have, have effectively got a, um, a Concerto speaker. The Q7 obviously having the additional bass driver on there. Alongside these aesthetic changes, there's also, of course, been some design changes in terms of the way that these speakers operate. Things like the upgraded crossover, that's been refined a little bit. There's also been some changes made to the shadow flare area around the UniQ driver. But the biggest addition, as you mentioned last week, unquestionably, is the fact that you've now got the metamaterial absorption technology, MAT, built into the Q-Series range. This combined with the UniQ driver is just a match made in heaven. I mean, you guys will know if you've watched the channel for a long time and we've covered uh, Kef products, it's two things that I constantly mention, but it's because the combination of them gives you this incredible experience that really unlocks a whole new level of performance at that speaker's price point. And again, the Q7s are no exception on that front. We have mentioned it a lot, but just to cover it again, if you aren't aware, the matte technology is essentially there to uh, prevent distortion coming from the tweeter and gives you a much clearer sound. And then the UniQ driver is just something that allows the speaker placement to be much more forgiving and gives you a really wide, huge sound stage. And again, combine those together in layman's terms, just gives you a fantastic all round sound. On the screen now, I'll put some of the technical specifications for the Q7s. If you do want to see those in all their glory, I'll put those in the description down below, as well as a link to the Q7s for you to take a real close look at if you do want to cast your eye over those. Um, as always, we don't tend to go super, super in depth on that when we're talking about them, but all that information is in the description down below for you guys. So the important thing then, the Q7s, how do they sound and how do they compare to some of the other options that you guys might be looking at around the kind of £1,400 price point. I don't think I've actually mentioned it yet. You would have seen it in the tech specs, but the Q7 is coming in at £1,399. And um, 
Again, Kef have done an absolutely outstanding job. It's actually been a really enjoyable experience doing these last couple of videos because I've been able to listen to the concertos, the Q7s, the Q11s, and uh, kind of compare them, contrast them, see where these speakers fall within the range and what you can compare them to. And uh, the Q7s were actually the first speaker that I listened to, and we plugged them in, listened to them on our trusty Unity Nova system that we got here. And uh, immediately I was blown away. I mentioned this in the concerto video, how the level of performance that you get from um, th this whole range actually compared to what you'd expect, it just punches well above and beyond what you'd normally get at that kind of £1,400, £1,500 price point. And you get this wonderful, clear, detailed sound from Kef. It's a real neutral kind of sound signature that Kef go for. And one thing that I've said before on the channel, when you're listening to stuff, you want it to sound as it was designed to sound. And again, this Q Meta series does a fantastic job of that across the board. If we're comparing them to the concerto speakers that we looked at last week, um, unquestionably the biggest difference is the low end. When you listen to one next to the other, that is really noticeable. And I think if you're someone that's trying to fill a larger room, that is definitely going to be an area where the Q7s will do a much better job than the concertos, as fantastic as the concertos are. Um, that's just undeniable in my opinion. Um, again, they're saying fantastic that the only downside to having access to all this fantastic new stuff that Kef have released is I listened to the Q7s, I thought they were absolutely incredible. I then listened to the Q11s and they blew me away even further. And I think, I don't know if you guys have ever had this, but when you listen to a higher level speaker then come down to the one below it, it's very hard to kind of get back to that same level of excitement because as fantastic as the Q7s are, they are certainly not as good as the Q11s, as you would obviously expect. But um, I've got to say, you know, if you're someone that can afford the Q11s and that's like a next step you're kind of weighing up, is it worth it? They are outstanding, the Q11s are. I mean, if you want to see a video on those, do let me know and I'll try and get that on the channel in the next couple of weeks as well, you know. Why not go through the whole Kef New Q range, to be fair? It's, um, it's a great range and those Q11s are absolutely stunning to listen to. Going back to the Q7s, one thing that we always talk about with Kef is how well they manage the low end on their floor standards and bookshelves. And again, Q7s are no exception to that. I do think you could definitely get away with using these without the need of a subwoofer. If you're using them in an AV setting, which again, the Q range is fantastic for both music and AV from my experience. This new range is no different, can handle both elements fantastically well. Maybe then you'd want a subwoofer to get to the real low lows, but I think for most people, particularly if you're listening to music, it would handle it without a subwoofer, no problem whatsoever. A fantastic, well-rounded, immersive sound that the Q7s offer. And um, again, I, can't, I don't want to repeat myself, but I'm going to by saying again that the sound that you get for the price that you pay here, because some people will class the Q7 as an entry-level floor standard. At 1399 I don't know if it's quite entry level for most people, but the sound that you get from it, I mean, is absolutely insane. And um, I saw a couple of people commenting on the last video, actually asking for very specific um, comparisons with different ranges from Kef and other manufacturers. And one that came up quite a lot was people wanting to know how similar they are to the R range, which is the range that's above the Q range with Kef. And I've got to say the gap, I mean, if you listen to the Q7 speaker, and then the, the Q7 Meta speaker, and then the R7 Meta speaker, the gap is nowhere near as big as you would expect it to be. I mean, for the difference in price, the R7 coming in at nearly double the price, I think it is off the top of my head, I think it's a much closer gap than you would expect. I was actually watching a, another, another um, video about the Q11s actually, and uh, the, that person was saying, you know, if you're someone that owns an R11, then would you almost be a little bit upset as to how close the Q11's performance came because the difference in price is so massive. And I do agree with that. I kind of think, you know, if you're someone that's got the reference series right now, the R series, comparing that to the Q series, the gap, it, you almost think, oh, could I saved a little bit of money for that little bit of performance there? It's, um, it's a much closer gap than I would have ever expected Kev to produce. But that's what you get when you bring these great refinements like they have and trickle down the technology from the reference range all the way down to the entry level range. And at the end of the day, let's not beat around the bush. This is a fantastic thing for consumers. You're getting access to this incredible technology at what is, again, an entry level speaker effectively, and that cannot be a bad thing.
What I'm going to include in the video now is just around 40 seconds of the speakers playing with them being recorded by the iPhone. Um, this is something that some people had commented saying that they wanted to see. So if you do want to see this in the future, do let me know in the comment section down below on future speaker overview review videos. Um, it's just going to be a couple of very cheesy royalty free tracks playing from Spotify. But uh, hopefully this will give you a bit more of a feel of what the Q7s are all about. I think in closing, it's going to be very, very similar to the Concerto video last week, in truth. I mean, Kef have got an absolute winning combination on the go at the moment. And I think if you're someone that's out there, you've got a budget of around £1,500, you're in the market for a floor standing speaker, you are going to struggle to go wrong with the Q7s. So, I mean, one thing I would say, if you can push the budget up to the Q11s, I do think there's a big difference there. Those Q11s are absolutely outstanding. As I mentioned, if you want to see a video on those, I'll do that in the future. But generally speaking, the Q7s are going to beat off a lot of the competition that's around that similar kind of price point. So I would love, as always, to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments section down below if you have managed to give these a listen. Again, thank you so, so much for your support on the channel recently, in particular last week, in particular last week's video. Again, if you can get anywhere near that for this video on the Q7s, that would be hugely, hugely appreciated. I will speak to you guys all in next week's video. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll speak to you there.